Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name's Bruce Phillip. Um, I work for Specific, uh, Senior uh, Technology Transfer Fellow. Um, specific, specific is a university-led industrial um, project looking at turning buildings into power stations by capturing and storing solar energy. Um, first of all, I have to uh, offer an apology. This topic, the topic of this conversation is more on the energy assessment end of this, the title than the retro, retrofit mine water district heat network report. So to those geotechnical people of whom there are a good number in the room, I offer my apologies. Um, this particular piece of work was done in collaboration with Cardiff Metropolitan University on behalf of Bridgend County Borough Council. So a quick overview of the content of this talk. First of all, I'll get a little, give a little bit of context in terms of heating the UK, a bit of background to the Mine Water Heat Network project, for looking at the energy assessment methodology used and our findings. Um, I'll discuss some thermal and electrical considerations of the project, uh, the potential for renewable integration, um, before presenting some conclusions. So first of all, heating in the UK. It accounts for nearly half the energy consumed in the UK and a third of the carbon emissions. Approximately 80% of this is for heating buildings, um, in particular homes. And natural gas provides up to 80% of this heat. Unfortunately, the UK imports more than half its gas. As a result, government policy is driving a reduction in gas um, consumption. But as you can see from the graph here of daily metrics, um, gas consumption in blue and electricity consumption in red. Uh, peak gas demand in winter is up to three times that of electricity. And there's insufficient capacity in the electrical grid for direct substitution of gas heating with electrical heating. So following uh, on from government policy, Bridgend County Council are looking to solutions to the energy trilemma reducing emissions and cost whilst safeguarding security of supply. One of the options under consideration is a geothermal heat network supplied from the flood and mine workings underneath Kaira, which is the village pictured on the right with the uh, initial borehole just in the front of the image. The council are hoping this will provide a link uh, to the mining heritage of the area and some much needed local employment. To that end, a project group comprising academics, industrialists, and local government representatives were assembled to uh, investigate the feasibility of the project. So fuel poverty um, is a situation where um, a household pays more than 10% of its income on heating the home. Uh, this is a situation that affects over 23% of Welsh households. Uh, Kaira, the village in question, uh, had a colliery which was operational between 1889 and 1979. It was the most productive in Wales. Ironically, it was recently rated as the fifth most deprived community in Wales in terms of fuel poverty. Uh, the pictures here are of Kaira and its Haiti. So where is Kaira? It's in the Bridge End County Borough Council, highlighted in blue on the map there. This is it present day and a picture of Kairan 1914, which shows that most of the buildings in the village were built around about the turn of the century to meet the demand for uh, colliery workers, which at its peak reached 2,400. So a very simplistic schematic of the, uh, the scheme. Um, the proposed scheme is to pump mine water up, circulate it round pipework, feed it into each of the houses in the village, once it enters the houses, it'll go into a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger will feed a heat pump. Um, electricity will be used to amplify the thermal energy to provide a low temperature um, space heating uh, system and hot water for bathing. So the initial borehole found the temperature in the mine water to be 20 degrees centigrade, which is significantly higher than you would expect from a standard ground source heat pump, around about 11 degrees. Uh, so that was good news. Um, further testing is required to find out the volume of water available and what the temperature drop would be under high pumping loads. Um, and the subject of the rest of this presentation is looking at the heat loss 
from the buildings to try and predict the size of the scheme that would be required to meet that lo heat load. So the project aim is to provide a heat network which supplies between 150 and 850 homes in the village to maintain and improve, hopefully, comfort levels in pre-1919 properties. So there were a number of key questions that needed to be answered. What is the current household heat loss, overall heat load, thermal output of the heat pumps required to meet that load? And while we're in there, what is the existing heating system? Has it the ability to work at a lower temperature as would be supplied from a heat pump? And what is the space available for the heat pump technology within the buildings? The way the approach to this was uh, many surveying techniques, including an internal and external measurement survey, a schedule of conditions survey, and air permeability testing. The results of these were fed, fed into uh, heat loss calculations using the standard assessment procedure, SAP 2012. And this was cross-referenced against energy consumption from smart meters where available. Finally, a little bit of thermographic analysis was done to identify major weaknesses in the building fabric, thermal weaknesses. Uh, so getting on to some of the results, uh, eight houses were surveyed. They were all pre-1919 solid stone built. They're arranged in the table here according to the number of exposed walls. Um, property A had four exposed walls. Properties B to D, three exposed walls. E to H, two exposed walls. There's a, a broad range of insulation which had been added to the, the properties over the years. Some had very little or none, um, up to some which had some external wall insulation, a little bit of internal wall insulation, and up to 200 millimeters of loft insulation. However, in all cases, the loft insulation was below the minimum recommended um, in current building regs, 270 mil. All showed signs of dampness and poor ventilation. And unfortunately, the radiators in all properties were too small to operate on the lower temperature system. Um, air permeability tests were done using a, a single fan blower door covering all vents um, and open fireplaces for the duration of the test. Um, interestingly, all of the properties were compliant with current UK building regulations of 10 meters cubed air infiltration per hour per meter squared at 50 pascals, which says as much about current building regulations as it does about the quality of workmanship 120 years ago. Um, as would be expected, the ad Average heat transfer coefficient increases with the number of exposed walls. Um, however, you can see the um, highlighted in pink there, the um, buildings which have external wall insulation and the reduction in heat loss as a consequence. So looking at the heating energy, here we have um, some of the heating gas um, for one of the properties excluding hot water and cooking um, in blue on the graph. The external temperature in orange and heating degree days in black. Um, for those of you not familiar with heating degree days, these are used as a metric for trying to estimate the amount of energy that's required to heat a building. Um, they work by setting a base temperature, in this instance 16 degrees, um, below which the heating is expected to be turned on in a property. So, for instance, uh, in a cold day in December there, where we had uh, approximately 1 degree centigrade outside, you're 15 degrees below the base temperature, which is equivalent to 15 heating degree days. Um, as you can see, there's good correlation between um, the heating degree days and the gas consumption. Converting the gas consumption to units of energy, we can then compare it to the output from the uh, SAP calculations using two weather files. One is the standard averaged weather files for the region, and the other is the uh, our weather files for the period of the observations from the nearest local weather for forecasting station. As you can see, uh, the heating gas follows a trend which is closer to the local weather conditions, um, but in all cases, the uh, amount of gas consumed is considerably less than would be predicted. Um, 
This is most likely explained from incidental heat gains from human activity, lighting, cooking, electrical appliances, and casual solar gains, which weren't taken into account. Um, also, there may be a certain amount of underheating due to economic reasons. So looking at the thermography of the buildings, uh, this is a typical property which was onion insulated on the, the front of the building due to the dressed stone frontage um, and had some external wall in the, the rear. Um, the uh, areas of high heat loss are identified by dark blue and black areas. Along the eaves there, we can see poorer missing insulation, thermal bridging um, through to the loft joists, uh, heat loss via conduction through the solid stone frontage around about the window there, um, and also colder corner junctions where reduced air movement can lead to condensation buildup and dampness and the signs of black mold. Looking at the outside of the building, here the converse is true. High heat loss is identified by um, areas of white and red. The building on the left uh, is the one that was under survey, um, had external wall insulation, and you can see the benefit in terms of lower heat loss as compared to the neighboring house on the right. However, um, there is higher heat loss at complex junctions between the extensions under the eaves and as well as the real reveals around the windows. Um, also, there's very high heat loss from a heated conservatory. So, trying to turn this into something useful in terms of scaling the heat pumps, um, using the average heat transfer coefficient um, and taking a, a delta T of 24 degrees, uh, which would be equivalent to a 21 degree internal temperature, in worst case scenario, minus three degrees external temperature for the location. Um, we were able to can calculate peak heating loads for the properties, which ranged in the third column there from 3.9 up to over 15 kilowatts continuous energy input to maintain a 21 degree comfort temperature within the properties. Again, the Properties with external wall insulation are highlighted in pink, and they show that you can get below a six kilowatt peak um, heating load with sensible levels of thermal intervention. Uh, that's good because that's one of the sizes of heat pump that were specified for the project. Um, to extend this a little further, we looked at some therm uh, theoretical thermal interventions, which are slightly unrealistic. Um, Due to the thicknesses, 350 mil of loft insulation is possible. 250 mil of wall insulation is getting excessive. And triple glazing. Um, you can see in the final column um, the reduced heat loads that could theoretically be possible. However, in terms of cost uh, planning restrictions, particularly with the stone frontages and reduced access around the building and into the loft, as I say, they are slightly unrealistic. Um, so we've shown that uh, you could potentially transfer from gas over to a, a heat pump network um, for the properties. Um, and this is obviously going to increase the electrical demand. An 850 home network would re require an extra 1.36 megawatts um, of electrical load. Fortunately, as the graph shows, uh, the carbon equivalent of the electrical grid has been reduced in recent years and continues to do so with the increased um, amount of uh, renewable energy in the mix. Um, this can further be reduced by use of local generation and storage, coming back to what specific do. Um, fortunately, the village has good orientation and topography for solar generation, with a number of the houses having a south-easterly aspect. Sorry, I'm rushing a bit. Typical roofs uh, could accommodate up to three kilowatts peak of solar uh, PV, providing 2.8 megawatts per year of uh, energy generation. Solar thermal energy could be used for preheating of air and water uh, to offset the heating load, and storage, both thermal and electrical, could time shift the electrical demand to periods of lower grid stress and offset utility bills. Um, finally, the picture on the right-hand side there uh, is a reference to the interseasonal heat storage work being conducted at Specific, amongst other um, institutions, which would revolutionize the way we look at heat and potentially allow you to store heat from summer to winter or from waste industrial processes. Um, and here are my conclusions. I'm in the red, so I'm going to get into trouble. So I'll just leave it at that and say 
thank you to my sponsors, and thank you very much for listening.